In this video, I'm going to introduce the category of syndromes called mononeuropathy. Let me write that out. Mono, meaning one, neuro, meaning nerve, and pathy, meaning abnormality or disorder. So that mononeuropathy means dysfunction of one nerve. Dysfunction of one nerve. So mononeuropathies are a focal problem of the nervous system and not a diffuse problem. Like when we were talking about polyneuropathy, and poly meaning many, that's diffuse dysfunction of nerves. But this is focal dysfunction because we're just talking about one nerve isn't working properly. And with dysfunction of one nerve, we can have abnormalities related to the three types of axons that travel in nerves. We can have somatosensory abnormalities, somatosensory abnormalities from the somatosensory axons traveling through the nerve that will involve the skin and or the deep tissues that are innervated by that nerve. There can be lower motor neuron abnormalities of the muscles innervated by that nerve if the lower motor neurons that are passing through the nerve are involved with the dysfunction. Lower motor neuron abnormalities. And there could be autonomic abnormalities. Autonomic if the autonomic axons traveling in that nerve are involved. But I'm going to put parentheses around autonomic because the common mononeuropathies, we usually don't see autonomic abnormalities. Or if we do, they're very subtle compared to the somatosensory and or lower motor neuron abnormalities that we more commonly see. So theoretically, you can have dysfunction of any nerve of the peripheral nervous system. So you could have a syndrome of mononeuropathy involving any nerve of the body and somatosensory abnormalities of the skin and deep tissues that it innervates, and or lower motor neuron abnormalities of the muscles that it innervates. But in reality, there are certain nerves that are most often affected by disorders causing mononeuropathy syndromes, and the nerves that most often develop dysfunction in isolation that develop a mononeuropathy syndrome include several of the arms or the legs. So where we usually see our our deficits, our abnormalities are in a few particular places in the arms and the legs. And this will usually be on just one side. So just one arm will be affected or just one leg will be affected. Although some of these are so common that some people develop dysfunction of the same nerve on both sides, but it's more common to just get one side involved. In other videos, I'll get into some of the specifics of some of the specific common mononeuropathies, but I'll just mention the most common one as an example of, of this category of syndromes of the nervous system. And that's a nerve that passes through the wrist here to the hand. And this nerve is called the median nerve, and it passes through a little tunnel in the wrist called the carpal tunnel. And so when there's an abnormality of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel, we actually call that the carpal tunnel syndrome. And that's the most common mononeuropathy syndrome. And it's actually one of the most common syndromes of nervous system dysfunction overall. And I'll save the details for later, but in general, the symptoms and signs of carpal tunnel syndrome tend to all be in one hand because there are somatosensory receptors in parts of the hand. I'll just draw an R for somatosensory receptors. And then the axons from those receptors travel through the median nerve in the wrist on their way back to the central nervous system. And there are lower motor neuron axons traveling through the median nerve, going through the wrist on their way out to some muscles in the hand. So when there's some kind of pathology, some kind of disorder here at the wrist that affects that median nerve, those axons can be affected. And what we often see is that a part of the hand develops somatosensory abnormalities. And again, I'll get into the specifics of this later but it'll just be in the territory of that nerve. It'll just be these specific parts of one hand that'll get these somatosensory abnormalities. And or there may be lower motor neuron abnormalities of just very specific muscles in the hand that are innervated by the lower motor neurons of the median nerve. So by learning the anatomy of some of the nerves, particularly the ones that are most commonly affected with these mononeuropathy syndromes, by learning their somatosensory territory and what muscles their lower motor neurons innervate, you can recognize these patterns that are created, these syndromes, these mononeuropathy syndromes, and figure out what nerve is involved. And that's very helpful because different disorders tend to affect different nerves. And so that can point you toward the right diagnosis for the underlying disorder causing the mononeuropathy syndrome. 